<clears throat> what we're going to demo today is uh, we're going to talk about today is VMware on AWS and uh, how Red 8 is the best provider for that service and things VMware. So, uh, as Mel said, if you have any questions during the presentation or demo, please uh, either chat or just uh, speak up. We have a, a nice small forum this morning, which is good. And uh, again, we can keep it as dynamic as we need to. Um, I am in the office at a large building, so if you hear sirens, I'll try to mute. <laughs> There's been a couple uh, sirens going off this morning. Anyway, uh, for those of us that, uh, that this is an overview of what Red 8 is and its companies of uh, products. So Insight Investments is our parent company. It owns uh, three really good companies, Red 8 being one of them. Red 8 is the partner side of the house where we do all of the computer uh, professional services, computer installs, sales, et cetera. Uh, we have a financial arm, which is, allows us to be very flexible with regards to financing and or um, helping you out in non-computer areas. We have uh, about $900 billion in assets, although we're not a bank, so we're very, very flexible getting the deals, changing OPEX to CAPEX, et cetera. So we have Second Gear, which is a really cool business that I love because they uh, they buy refer they buy older gear refurbish it sell it back so they they do everything from servers laptops desktops amazing group of people allows us to move very quickly in that space uh, if you have questions regarding the second gear options uh, be sure to check your uh, with your sales reps on how that how we can help you with that focusing more on the Red 8 side uh, Red 8 traditionally was a data center company which means they sold all things data center. Uh, recently, though, we've been expanding that data center practice even to include a lot of DR, a lot of relocation, and uh, more recently, even the cloud DevOps uh, group, which is what I run, we get to do uh, all the cloudy stuff, all the DevOps automation stuff. Uh, in addition, we've rolled uh, VMware into, into that group. And so we've got some really amazing talent on that team. And then uh, lastly, but not leastly, I know, uh, one of them is missing here is the advanced analytics group, but we have a security group, which uh, again, recent for Red 8. So I have an advanced analytics group, which is not listed here, unfortunately. <clears throat> but today I want to talk specifically about our VMware practice and then very specifically about VMware AWS practice. So the VMware and AWS product is what I feel is one of the, the two companies in the world right now that are very data center focused, NetApp and VMware, are making their cloud presence very well known and their products that they've come out with are very, very uh, good. And in terms of the one we're talking about today, which is VMware and AWS, this is a properly done implementation of VMware on AWS hardware. So I'll stress that again, it is VMware managed on AWS hardware, but integrated with AWS as much as it can be, giving you a VMware-like cloud experience. And what I mean by that is cloud gives you very good scalability and agility, and what you get with VMware on AWS, otherwise known as VMC, is you get that ability as well. So it is, uh, it is something we're going to demo today and talk about exclusively. So it's got a lot of areas that are um, make life very easy in a VMware world perspective. At the bottom of that slide, it lists the four major reasons and use cases we feel that are important. Data center extension, uh, which is essentially what we're demoing today. Uh, disaster recovery, so you could easily spin up a uh, SDDC in VMware on AWS and kick off your SRMDR a sync up to there uh, really quickly, very, very simply. Uh, cloud migrations allows you to migrate to the cloud. For example, if you have a mandate to get to the cloud, uh, that is easier said than done for a lot of companies. If you have traditional VMs, uh, traditional applications, and you just really need to get out of your data center, uh, moving to the cloud with this product is very, very easy, as we'll see today. Uh, and then also next generation apps, right? You have a heavy-duty VMware environment, but you don't want to move everything to the cloud, per se. You can actually upgrade your apps on VMware to utilize VMware services in Amazon with this product. So again, if you see here, right, you've got basically 
uh, what we're going to demo today, which is VMC. You've got, you can tie all the native services of Amazon into your, new, your cluster now, uh, making it very, very easy to keep going. What you get with VMC is you get uh, the latest copy of vSphere, you've got a vSAN data store, and you've got NSX. This is all built and managed for you from VMware in the cloud, again. And then if you need to expand this box, i.e. add hosts or shrink hosts, very, very straightforward, very, very simple. So. As far as uh, Red 8, we have an incredible team of professionals that have got a plethora of certifications uh, around VMware, everything from NSX, data center, uh, vSAN, desktop, virtualization, you name it, we have it. We are one of only 12 partners on, uh, on North America that have the uh, to get us various badges especially around the VMC platform. VMware thinks very highly of us regarding our VMC presence and what we've done there. Um, so this is a, a list basically of what, you know, what we have done in terms of what Red 8 provides. The Red 8 provides a full assessment environments. We can come into an assessment of what you have, what you don't have, and then take you all the way to the end, including a managed services environment. So, uh, and we, we, we do the hyper-converged pieces, desktop virtualization. We have a service now called Desktop as a Service, which, again, we're not driving into today, but is a, an amazing product. We also, to the point, we have a cloud provider, as well as all NSX and all of the services from VMware we cover end-to-end. -to, -end. to that effect, I mentioned that VMware thinks very highly of us, and so we got them to, you know, They've recommended us to many, many big accounts. We've done a lot of really, really good work with VMware around uh, AWS as well as just, just general VMware, but they give us a really nice quote here around our competencies and what we're able to do with VMware on AWS. So I mentioned Red 8 is your one-stop shop for all things VMware, and what I mean by that is we can come in and assess, design, and deploy a VMware environment for you but it's not just, it doesn't just stop there, right? We need to come in, let's say you have a smaller environment with uh, limited IT staff, right? We can come in, provide a managed services platform where you have 24 by seven support for your VMware environment. That includes monitoring, logging, services, whatever you need. Uh, we can come in do health checks, all of the above. The point here is that Red 8 is a premier VMware partner for all things uh, for your company, right? Tying that back into uh, some of our other companies, right? We've got the financial services arm, we've got the refurbished arm, all of those, all of those Red 8 can provide for you. So on the managed services front, we have the option for customers, we've done this for quite a few customers, come in and just literally take over their environment, sort of a, a fully managed VMware environment where literally all you have to do is open the ticket, get yourself a VM. We can help design if there's an application requirement there. We can help design networking, et cetera, within the VMware environment. Again, handled for you soup to nuts from a, from a VMware uh, environment. So uh, some eye candy, I call it, of uh, some of our customers that have utilized Red 8 services, everything from, uh, you know, the, the space guys to all the way down to the, the, the car guys, right? So we've got, a, 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 again, a long list of customers that have entrusted Red 8 as their VMware, um, VMware partner. So some, three, some, some specific uh, use cases we've, we've highlighted here for some VMware jobs we've done. Clear structure, we'll have a little uh, slide after this and more of the details. Essentially, basically, we took their aging VMware environment and moved it to VMware on AWS. Uh, and we utilized all the services. I'll get into that in just a second. Our cast and crew, this whole point here is that we, you know, we came in soup to nuts. We did a Cisco UCS hyperconverged environment with ESXi, uh, SRM, and some NSX deployments. And then Cisco, we did a, a large NSX and VRA deployment. So on the uh, clear structure one, they came to us and they wanted us to do an analysis of what, uh, you know, what we could offer them in terms of, look, we have this older VMware environment, 
we need to do DR, we don't want to refresh all of our capital. So we came in, showed them VMC, said, look, we should, we should move you to VMC. That's a much better option for their environment. Um, in doing so, we took back all their equipment, right? We bought back all their old equipment through our second gear facility, gave them a, uh, gave them a, a credit back, utilized our financial services arm, what we call Red A Capital, to do some cloud billing to make their financial flow easier on them. And then again, like I said, we, the whole point was to move them to VMC and we were able to do that uh, start to finish for them, a very large uh, VMware shop. Um, before I start talking about this, uh, another eye candy slide. Any questions from anybody on the call? Okay, I'll carry on. Uh, again, everybody's got to have an eye candy slide about all of the partners we work with. We we do integrate with all of these customers, all of these here. We've done, uh, I think every one of our engineers has touched uh, just about every one of these. We've got F5, Red Hat, uh, Nutanix, Cisco, uh, all of the above, right? We've got security areas, have database areas, uh, the, the list is, is large. We've got all the clouds listed, so we, we are a Amazon, Azure, and GCP partner. Um, again, there's really not a, a requirement that the customers come to us with that we can't at least uh, get answered at some level. Again, more, more of the same. All right, and so today, again, the point here today is to talk specifically about VMware on AWS. I, I bring this back up just because I wanted to refresh uh, everyone's memory of, about what, you know, what this is. So, I can't stress enough that this is VMware on Amazon hardware. So when we spin this up, as we'll see in a minute, um, you are literally, it's not a, it's not a re-virtualized version of VMware. This is uh, VMware managed by VMware in an Amazon data center. The beauty of this product is they have created a very cloud-like experience for VMware itself. And what that means is you can go in there, define a set of hosts that you want to build your cluster for, and then if you say, you know what, I need a bigger cluster, it's not a matter of days or weeks to get a host added, it's a matter of minutes. So they've taken the cloud idea, which is agility, and they've applied it somewhere. So it's a fully managed uh, platform with, with on Amazon hardware. Again, I mentioned what you get with the platform. You've got vSphere uh, 6.x, whatever the latest is, uh, vSAN data store, as well as NSX networking, all, all, can, all uh, built for you, for you. Again, you still have the ability to go in there and do stuff in those pieces, but again, there's a, I'll, I'll point out a little bit later where the management side of it is. Um, and as we'll see on this one right here, the seamless workload portability, that's what we're demoing today. I, uh, my background is uh, I used to do infrastructure for many years. It did a lot of automation, uh, started getting into cloud. It spent my early days um, with VMware 2.0 and above. And as a VMware admin, I think it's important to show the simplicity of this platform and how simple it is to work with. Okay, let's see. Um, so again, some of, the, some of the pieces I'll go into here, uh, workload relocation. So we will demo this today. This is important. So one of the areas that, you know, again, you're going to talk about this product is because you want to be able to expand or, or replicate your VMware environment to another location, whether that be DR, whether that be expansion, whether that just be, you know, I've been told to go to the cloud, how the heck can I do that, right? So we will show how easy it is to get your, your workloads to the cloud with VMC and HCX, literally just a, a couple mouse clicks. Again, scalability, I've mentioned this before, right? So when you go, the cloud offers a, uh, the, the, the reason the cloud is so popular is it's very uh, agile. I can spin up machines and services literally in minutes, and typically in our, you know, legacy data center VMware environments, we would have to, you know, for maybe a year or two out, buy some capital, buy some storage, buy some this, buy some that, and then if all of a sudden the company comes with a large project, there's, there's weeks if not months of building out infrastructure to accommodate that. Well, not so not at all with regards to VMC, right? If I need five more hosts, I say I want five more hosts, and within an hour I have five more hosts. Uh, it's just that simple, and it, it just works. Uh, again, modernizing your applications, right? I have the ability, because I'm linked 
into Amazon, right, I can take advantage of some of the Amazon feature sets that they offer. Let's say I want an RDS pool, I want an S3 bucket. I don't have to worry about linking or anything else. It just, it just is right next to me now because I'm in Amazon. Graphic diversity, this is something a lot of customers of ours ask for, right? They don't want to be in the same, they don't want to be in Los Angeles or God forbid Ridgecrest, right? They want to be outside of potentially California, potentially North America, right, if they, they want to do that. With the Amazon global footprint, you get that availability right away. Uh, DR, we talked about that. So if you literally had no DR today, you could spin this up, start SRM, and have your DR basically done, uh, not tested, but, you know, you know, you'd have a warm and fuzzy that your stuff is sitting in the cloud protected uh, literally in a, a couple of weeks, right? And that's where Red 8 would come in and really help you get to that point very quickly. And then test and development, right? This is always the, as I said earlier in my, uh, my earlier presentation, right, the bane of infrastructure's existence is developers, right? They always want more. So if they want more, we can spin up as many hosts as they need for test and dev, and as we'll see, we can stretch the VLAN so that they don't have to worry about IP changes or any of that stuff. So it, the platform, as I mentioned, I like the platform a ton because it's a really, really good platform. It works, and it's very simple to operate. I'll, uh, I'll pause here for any questions from anybody. And get a drink myself. All right, we'll, uh, we'll press on. So, so, Back to Red 8 and what we can, what we offer, right? So the, we offer the ability to, to buy VMware or use VMware in any fashion, meaning that if you wanted to come in and do a fully managed environment, you want us to help you with the financing, all of that is possible through Red 8. Uh, we can, again, our, uh, our, our reps work with you to come up with the best option for you, present many options in terms of uh, you know, purchase it directly, you want to go through a managed service idea, you want to help us, you know, we can help you set up everything to get you migrated, and then at the end, we can help you with the financing, right? So we bring all three of the arms of, of uh, Insight Investments to bear to help you as the customer with the best solution is, is the point of this slide. All right, so I'm going to turn around here on my screens about what's going on to give you the idea of the demo. Before I kick into the demo environment again, I'll ask any, any questions before we get right into the stuff. All right, so bear with me whilst I change screen shares. I think the next slide is this, okay, good. All right. Hey everybody, so, this is Melissa Wright. Um, just while he's switching over, um, you know, we've got a couple great Red 8 resources on the line, Nate and Wayne, uh, Matt Brown. If you guys have anything that you would like to um, cover on top of what Matt is, or John is bringing up, please feel free to speak up. We'd love to get your participation as well. So just a heads up, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Thank you, Mel. So, uh, I, you know, my, uh, my, my drawing skills are not as good as my technical skills, so I put together just a very quick um, outline of what our demo in, is entailed. We have a data center in Equinix in El Segundo, and we are running uh, a rack of servers there. I'll show the vCenter for that. We have a, a specific cluster, the 940X Dell cluster, and we built some uh, specific HCX folders for this. Uh, we've connected it with Direct Connect up to Amazon with HCX. HCX provides us a layer two stretch uh, on the network as well as the migration ability. And then I've uh, deployed the Amazon into Northern California. So this gives you just a very rough idea uh, of how it's connected. Uh, if you have specific questions, please speak up and we can we can go into that, but it's, it's forward. So first thing I get into is our vCenter in our data center, right? This vCenter stuff, right? No magic here. It's uh, it's got five clusters. We've got some NSX in here. We got some uh, we've got some uh, HCI from NetApp. A variety of, of of equipment so that we can show our customers, you know, anything we anything we have. So uh, let's see, what's here? 
All right, so down in here, I've got a folder where I'm gonna go into, these are some of the things I'm gonna play with today and, and migrate. So essentially what I've built is we have taken the VLANs that these two, that, that this stuff sits on, and we've stretched them over to the, to the VMC side. On the, I think the, the, more, the more entertaining side for some people, they wanna know what does it look like, what does VMC look like, what's my interface? It's in Amazon, do I have to know Amazon, et cetera. No, you really don't. Uh, there are a couple little tidbits of Amazon that you need to do to set up, but again, that's what Red Eight's for, is to help you get past that. What this is, is this is your interface into your managed VMware environments, right? So you've got uh, multiple, one or many multiple uh, software data centers. So I can have one or more. In this case, I just have one. I've, I've spun up a, essentially a demo environment from uh, VMware. It's a single host and I can go in here and look at those details. The reason I show this is because this is where you would manage your VMware as a customer on uh, VMC, right? Since I don't have physical access to the host, I need some way of managing all the pieces. So if I go into networking and security, right, I can manage the firewalls into my network, right, from, again, since I'm sitting on Amazon infrastructure, right, I, I manage the firewalls here, I set up my groups and services. Um, in this case, Direct Connect, right? We have a Direct Connect uh, with BGP turned on. So you can see there's my Direct Connect. This interface comes from uh, Amazon services, so I can do that. I've got a set of public IPs I can expose, et cetera, on and on. On the add-ons page, this is where you would add the features to the product itself in this case, I've added HCX. Now, HCX offers a lot of really cool stuff that we'll see later on, and it allows me to stretch my network as well as migrate my stuff. I want to do site recovery. I mentioned doing DR earlier. If I, if I had a mandate from my boss that came down and said, you know what, we have a, a 10 host VMware environment today, I need a DR solution tomorrow because whatever, right, we're getting purchased, uh, we're going public, whatever it is, you turn this on, done. Right? You now have a DR solution, layer two stretched into the cloud, and you're now protected. It's just that simple, okay? So these are all, you know, HCX is included, set recovery is an actual uh, extra cost, but again, the point here is it's point and click and you're done. It's just that easy. Again, along the way, I know I go pretty quick. Uh, I like to I like to show around a lot of stuff, but uh, if you guys have any questions along the way, please, please speak up. Uh, never a bad question. So this is the vCenter in Amazon, right? No big deal. It's the same thing as vCenter on-prem, right? It just happens to be managed by VMware, right? So I mentioned I have a single host. That single host, look at that. It says Amazon i3 Metal. So when uh, VMware and Amazon worked together to come up with this solution, uh, they came out with uh, a specific hardware host that uh, Amazon supports and VMware utilizes. And now you can actually buy a bare metal box in Amazon, and it's the same thing as this one. So what they do is they take those boxes, they spin up, and they put VMware on them, and they manage that all for you, right? So I've got... You know, I can go through all of the pieces here. I'm not going to go into vCenter too much. Now, since it's a managed option, a managed offering, I get my own resource pool for my VMs, but at the same time, all those great features from VMware that's managed, let's say, NSX, HCX, right, all of these things, vCenter itself, are all in this management resource pool, which I do not have access to because, again, it's a managed offering. Keep that in mind when you're doing it. Um, so that's there, and then we have a, I have the migration tab uh, on as well for, uh, for demoing that. So, <clears throat> again, back to what we have built. We've got uh, the full thing. Basically what we have done is Red 8 is we have connected up to like a customer would do. We wanted to build an environment that customers could see in action really, really does work, and it's really, really simple. So, on the... Back to RV Center on our side, we've got a, a set of VMs, and what we have is two web servers, right? So it's a basic web app. It's nothing. It's Apache. It's no, no great shakes. I have an SSH session into that, right? So I've got, I've got an IP address 
on my 51 network here. And here is the actual website of this server. So again, if there's anybody that's not following along, right, I've got a basic Apache web server. It's serving, serving up on that name. And just to prove that that's the case, I'm going to say service HTTPD, HTTPD stop. Right, I'm going to stop Apache. So theoretically, when I hit F5 here, I should get a failure. I should say, oh, look at that. It's not there. The, the server's not responding. That's because I stopped the service. Again, I'm not asking anybody to be Linux guys, but it just proves that this is the box that we're on and we're testing. Okay. Uh, everybody with me so far? Anybody? All right, thank you. All right, so what the demo entails, right, is essentially what I would like to do is move this workload over to the other vCenter, right? And I do that through the ATX console. Now, ATX, uh, I'll get this started here. We can see it in action. I'll say migrate virtual machine. It is linked up to my two vCenters, so it knows all my VMs and all my clusters. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to go find the Hello. I'm going to find that ACX demo folder, and I said, I want to move Web01. Now, this is different than a vMotion, but so much more powerful. So I have to go tell it a couple things. I'm like, it says, okay, where do you want to put it? Well, I want to put it into my workloads folder, okay, on the other side. Um, what container do you want to put it in? Well, I don't have access to the management pool because it's managed resources. I have a compute pool. If you, have, you can make new resource pools if you have, uh, say, a resource pool per application, that's totally possible, right? Storage, where do I want to put it? I get a workload, vSAN storage. And then same format as source. And then something that, uh, so vMotion, when you vMotion, right, you can either do the compute side or the storage side. You can't do both when they're turned on. But with HCX, I can. The other thing you can do now that with HCX is really cool is you can do what are called bulk migration. So I can click a bunch of these Let's say I want to go Sunday night, move a bunch of my developer boxes over to VMC. I can do that at night. What that will do is it will preload the disk on the other side and then flip them over when it's ready, when the, when the time comes. We're not going to do that. We're going to do a live vMotion. We want to see the best thing it has to offer. Right? Down here, it's telling me I'm going to take you from this 51 network to the stretched layer 2 extended, they call it, right? Layer 2 extended equivalent VLAN on the VMC side. What that does is that keeps my IP address the same, which is a huge deal um, for, uh, for migrations, right? If you do DR, you do migrations, you do, deal with development application groups, they don't want to change their stuff. This product, we don't have to. So I hit next. It does a, a similar vMotion, says, okay, looks like you're going to go, and we say finish. Now, at this point, it starts a it starts its prep process. And the point I do, the reason I do all this so diligently is what I want to show is that I'm in my box and I'm going to start pinging the server next to me. Okay? I'm going to start that ping while the migration is going on. What we should see, if everything goes as planned, and I, my demos never failed me, but the demo gods could be uh, ugly today. What I should see is that this ping time should go up. And that's because I'm going across the WAN with HCX. Now, HCX does a lot of really cool stuff, as I've mentioned. So two of the big things it's going to do for me right now is it does dedupe and it does compression. Since it's a VMware product, it's very intimate with all of the workings of VMware, both from the disk perspective and the networking perspective. It understands and can optimize those operations really, really well. So. If we look back at some of the history of the migrations I've done for demos, they're taking initially six minutes, but then four minutes, five minutes, and it's 32 gig over our, our direct connect is a one gig link. And it's like, well, wait a second, how is that happening? So what's happening is earlier when I did these migrations here, it caches the VMDK on the other side and uses change block tracking to only transfer the new bits that have changed, which in our case is not a lot because it's a simple. It's just a simple app. Um, so while that's going on, I'll pause again for any questions about the environment or anything we want to see in the demo.
All right. <clears throat> so again, the other thing I like to do, uh, I, don't, I was going to, what I, again, what I usually show, it's just about to cut over. I know that because it's from earlier demos. You'll see this, it's doing a lot of prep work here to figure out what the changes are between the VMDK. And what I like to do there is in the middle of the migration, again, I can come in here, let me stop that. I can stop Apache, I can, while it's migrating, right? I can go in there as a developer or as whoever and I can start, I can continue to work. I'm, uh, I'm no, I am not any, it's not any different for me, right? I don't see a difference. I come back up, oh, my website's back up, and if all things go well, it should kick over here in just a minute. Of course, a watch never boils. Whenever you wait, it's always it's always too slow. And as we'll see, you can see, you'll, you'll see, so you can even see, right, it's already showing up on the new side. Let's see what our migration's saying, all right? Starting our, starting the relocation, Again, I could do this in bulk. I can do this at night. I don't have to be here to do this live. In this demo, I am because I want to. I want to see it in action. And I go back here and I see it's missing. So its its personality is pretty much changed over. And oh, look at that! Right? We can. We can. We'll pause that real quick. Whilst I'm yakking, right? So if you look closely, my ping time changed between 01 and 02. But I nothing changed on an IP level, right? I kept running. Everything's running just fine. Go to the migration screen and look at that. It went from waiting to about 95, 98%. And let's check our website. Let me get this out of the way. Oh my goodness. All right. I go over here. Does it still work? Oh, look, it still works. Everything, everything just kind of worked. Um, as I mentioned, I, I did my last job. I may not have mentioned that, but my last job was in charge of doing building a DR solution. Um, doing this layer two stretching and extension is a real pain in the butt, and with HCX, it's pretty painless. I've not seen this painless in a long time. So again, while it was migrating, I'm doing all this work. So the point there, again, very seamless migration. The goal of the, of the was to make it so you could get to the cloud with VMware, same skill set as quickly as possible. Questions or comments? Hey, John, this is Melissa. Um, on our last um, uh, demonstration, we had a couple questions come in from the team. One related to um, security networking and, and managing their firewalls, and then another one related to I.O. performance. Um, maybe we should bring those up with this team. They might find the, what you found interesting. Thank you, Mel. Yeah, so one of, the, one, of the, one of our customers was asking, can you see the performance of the vSAN on the SDDC side? So, again, I haven't run VMware as an operations guy for some, or v, vSAN operations guy in a long time. I thought, oh, well, I'll just go into the disk and I'll go look at the workload data store and I'll say, you know, storage IO. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't work. Uh, and again, demo, live demos are always fraught with error. Well, I did a little research and apparently vSAN is. It doesn't go there. You you find this from a monitoring perspective on the cluster tab, and performance. Poof. There's the answer we were kind of looking for. So I was unable to answer the question at the time because again I I, uh, I don't do operations much these days. But uh, we do get the same feature set uh, out of out of the VMware the VMC offering. Uh, I had the same problem on our own our own uh, vSAN, so it wasn't a product problem, it was just a John didn't know what he was looking at problem. So the other question we had, Mel, was uh, around per permissions. So you can go in here and, and configure permissions from either a, uh, a different provider uh, like Active Directory or what have you if you wanted to to, uh, to get your stuff. Um, you know, it's no, again, it's no different than regular vCenter. But uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's a, that was a good point. Yeah, thank other, you, John. Other questions, comments? Does anyone take a guess how hard it is to migrate this VM back? Okay. I'll reverse the migration. It already knows what's there. Um, I'll just click that box and ask a couple questions. Um, another question that did come up that was really good, and um, I, I'll cover it now. So 
one of the things with a lot of customers want to know is, well, wait, what about my hardware changes from vCenter 5.5 or 6 to 6.7? What about the hardware, you know, what about the disk hardware? What about the actual compute hardware? All of those things, the storage, all of that is handled by HCX because it's not a true vMotion. Uh, it uses parts of the vMotion, but it is able to, to manage all of the uh, issues that a, a standard vMotion would not do across different hardware platforms and certainly not across vCenters. So we can, um, you know, we can change all that along the way. We can upgrade tools. That was something vCenter could do. Uh, uh, sorry, vMotion. And then upgrade the virtual hardware. That's not something that vMotion can do on an upgrade. You can do it on reboot. But uh, that's something, again, that, that, v, that HCX is, does provide. You can uh, power off the VMs again, uh, same, as, same as that. So I'm going to migrate this guy back, and you can guess how hard that's going to be. My finger gets very tired here, so bear with me. Come to the right data stores, et cetera, and vMotion, and next, and it should say I'm good to go, all green, hit finish. Uh, again, I watched pot never boil, so we're not going to wait for this guy to do it, but just for giggles, I will ping WebO2 and see if uh, whilst I'm talking and taking questions, we see anything, uh, we see anything different happen there. That's uh, the purpose of the, the reason I keep the demo so simple, I think as a VMware admin uh, charged with uh, potentially going to the cloud or doing something with DR or extending my environment or giving me an option for my data center expansion, I think it's important to show how simple this product is and how well it's built. Uh, it literally takes, to spin up a cluster in Amazon, takes about two hours, the initial cluster, because there's a lot of pre-building they do. Uh, all automated, right? I answer about uh, eight questions, away I go. And then uh, beyond that, hooking up HCX is about another 10 questions. That was very straightforward. And frankly, right after that, right, I'm done. I'm, I'm pretty much ready to roll. Uh, just like you see here, I don't have any, uh, there's nothing uh, nothing fancy here. I do want to show, um, you know, I'm clicking around pretty quick here, but I, I do want to show the Direct Connect stuff, right? So Direct Connect, in this example here, um, you could replace this with VPN. So if you don't have a Direct Connect to your data center uh, and you want to go VPN, that's totally legit. Uh, your latency might be a little bit different. And that's something else that uh, we brought up the last call was, um, Red 8 has is, is got a, a, a experience in WAN operation, reducing latency, you know, helping you, uh, helping you figure out how to make this transition as, as quick as possible. Again, we have the, the engineers that can help you design this and assess what, what would be the best solution for you. So, like I said, we're not going to wait for this guy to migrate. Um, it's still figuring out. It's going to use the same caching mechanism it did on, on uh, as before and get me back. In fact, it may, it's pretty fun to watch it do its thing in the middle of it, but uh, the, uh, the, the sample set here isn't working. So, so. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about our demo, and uh, really at, uh, that's about all I've got to show. Uh, again, I think it's important to show the simplicity, uh, getting your workloads to the cloud as fast as possible, zero. Uh, you know, you don't have to rewrite apps. You don't have to tell. You really don't have to tell your developers, right? I'm just moving you to the cloud. Yeah, your your dev workloads are all going there, right? That's one. That's one use case. Uh, if I wanted to do a DR, I can have SRM set that up, and I can do my testing right away. You literally can be running. You can have a full DR solution into the cloud in about two weeks, right? So that's uh, zero planning, of course. That's just you know pushing some buttons, but you can be done. And as I said, here we go, the, uh, the migration seems to have finished, or the personality has moved. Migration is not done, but again, it's moved back. It's going to show up in my other vCenter now, and away I go. So 